That's yeah, it's, like it's pretty work. pretty simple. Like, <laughs> even if you just think about it in a very simple way, if you can't run a five ten mile, it's gonna be very hard to run five twenty five miles or twenty six miles. You know, yeah, so that's, so that, that's a really good example because it's so close. Like if, like, let's say that same runner. Well, that, was, that was a really extreme example. Yeah, that's an extreme. If you can't example, run a five ten like, mile, you can't run five fifteen or twenty for three miles. Like right, and miles. and I think this is where people get met, uh, get get kind of um, mixed up as they go up in training. They stop working on even the five k. Uh, like they yeah. stop like actually even just for a simple part of like even a two year period working on that distance, not going out and just running it and just doing a 5k race, but actually training so that you get better at it. Because if once you leave those paces there, yeah, you have some, you have a window where then you can work on like the, just like the, the lactate threshold, like the hour long kind of effort. Yeah. Not, not tempo. Just make sure you, everybody hears that. Um, so you can work on those things. Cause that may be where somebody, if they came from a, where they ran the mile in high school, all that kind of stuff, they may need to work on that aerobic zone pretty heavily for a while. But then at some point you plateau if you're not cyclically working on all those metabolic areas and different and like focusing on max sprinting all the way up to yep. aerobic zones. Uh, the way I would implement it is once every seven to 10 days or so, mm-hmm. Maybe if it's uh, really early or something happens, you push that out to 12 days. But that 7 to 10 day window is nice. And, um, simple stuff like 5 by 6 seconds or 5 by 8 seconds. Uh-huh. You can uh-huh. do that on the hill, on the flat. Eventually you can move that to the track. Or you can start on the track in spikes. Um, maybe you want to build up to that for a month or so in training. Uh, you can make those 50 meter sprints, 60 meter sprints on the track. And you could also add in things like on a, for a different session, maybe two or three by a hundred and you kind of like sprint, float, sprint, or you could, yeah you could yeah. accelerate into it for the first 30. So not hundred percent. And then the last 70 is flying. Uh, you could do other things, six by 30 meter flying sprints. Um, I like to do some accelerative work, even with middle distance and distance runners. And actually yeah. one, of the, one yeah. of the top milers at UCCS this year, he would um, kind of interchange some stuff from a standing start or a rolling start. And it's really hard to pinpoint exactly what makes you successful in the sport, but he did feel at least. So that alone is a huge success that yeah, yeah. even doing some standing start stuff, he felt that it was really, uh, I don't know how to phrase this, but like more useful for starting races when if you're starting a high level 1500, you have to go out in 13 seconds and, get through, you know, 12 to 15 people, get to a nice position. Right, um, right. And then also just what it does to accelerative work is a more force demand on what hamstrings, yep. glutes, yep. quads, even probably the entire body. Yeah. And that's a, so that's a, that's actually a really interesting point um, because the posterior chain, so the whole backside of your body usually is weak and tight. Okay. So yeah, we can talk about strength training and all that stuff, but this is again what I, either you or I referenced earlier. I put these in the same category of what people make mistakes on, yeah, and what it can do for your body, even just from a health perspective. Like a lot of people, like if you're listening, obviously you probably want to get better at running, and that's great. But it's like if you're lifting and sprinting, you're probably going to have an overall symmetrical body, more, more a, a better probability of it regularly speaking and sprinting will literally it's not just like don't just think like your quads are the what's been what's being focused on or your calves because obviously you have to push off but like your whole hamstring glute and i would even go into your spine a bit is it's going to get a completely different stimulus or at least mostly than when you're just running yeah easy and with that kind of work i don't even time the rest for middle distance distance runners even the sprinters i work with so yeah. sometimes i will if yeah it's, we're trying to do something a little different, but minimum I like to say is like two and a two to two and a half minutes and probably three or more is, is more beneficial. So, I mean, whatever you want to do, if you're at the bottom of the hill and you want to throw rocks at a tree or <laughs> like uh, draw a little tic-tac-toe board and play tic-tac-toe, but a lot of people rush this middle distance, distance runners, especially they're like, yeah, oh, let's 40, do another 40, one. 40 seconds later. Yeah. It's like yeah. that your, your body does not have the time to recover 
you know you quite yeah. get the same stimulus, even though you feel, you feel like, it. You yeah, feel, you feel it. like, oh, I'm fine. It's like, well, yeah, you're in good shape. Yeah. You run, you know, 20 to your, your 80 CNS miles a week. CNS all the way through like all your like, muscles, and um, it yeah. just doesn't, I don't know, we could call it rebooting yeah. <laughs> in the same amount of time. So, well, I think with that, we should probably segue to what we noticed in our own running when we started sprinting, when yeah. we started doing that. Yeah, I mean, like, I'll, I'll keep this part kind of short. I said something like this in one of the recent podcasts, but I started out as a sprinter and I had multiple sport athlete, all that kind of stuff. And it's like, I, I had some, I had some wheels when I was young and where distance running was in early two thousands when I was in high school and then going into college starting in 06, this was not really a big topic. And people didn't talk about sprinting nor let alone strength training and how, how much that benefits you. Strides were like your, that was like the yeah. thing that was like sprinting. Like, oh, you do two, like four to six strides, like twice a week. Yep. 15 or so seconds. And that was about, yeah, 15 or so That's seconds. That's the first and thing that was taught to every runner. <laughs> yeah. And that was about it. It's good. And then it was like, at some point I got to my junior year of college and it was like, I was slow. Yeah. I was playing simply slow and I'm like, why am I not getting better? I'm doing all the thousand, the K repeats. I'm running 60, 70. There was times I got into the eighties miles a week. And it was like, especially relative to where I was in high school, that that was enough. If sprinting and strength and all that stuff was a part of what I was doing. Yeah. Yeah. That was enough for me to get better throughout college. And I obviously had some good improvements towards the end, but the good improvements came after I started sprinting. My Fourth year, I, I joined my some of my teammates who were, had a lot better speed at that time than I did. And I just kept doing this stuff and just getting my butt, my butt kicked. And it took a few months because I was essentially trying to reverse what was going on. And I hadn't sprinted in I don't know how long, like four years, other than like playing like frisbee football or speedball with my friends or something like that, which helped. But... Once I started implementing that and I was doing something weekly, after about six months, all of a sudden people noticed it. And I'm like, dude, you actually like your form looks better. Mm -hmm. I like, I remember, I still, I'll never forget the day. My buddy Charlie, who's like 151, 800 guy, he went to the track with me in the middle of summer before my fifth year. And he said, dude, you actually have sprinting muscles, whether that's like a, the right way to put that that's or not. That's a huge compliment. It was like right when he, I, I just sprinted down the track and he'd be like, Dude, Conan, you actually look like you can sprint now. And it was like, I, and that whole season, that was in the back of my head. It was like, this is this is a guy that could literally wipe the floor with me. One day, like a few months ago, I was doing 200s with him. And to help me get under 28, he ran behind me and put three fingers on my back. That's awesome. So that's how much, like he could run a 24 high yeah. in a, you know, 25 low in like a four by two workout. I like that that's kind of thing. Exactly. And like, Tricky and I, sure. it was like no joke. It was the fourth one. I went with him and his brother Ben, and they were running like twenty fives or something. I was just trying to break 30, 29, 30 and stuff. And then the last one, he literally put three fingers on my back and ran like right behind me, and I went twenty seven five. But anyway, so the whole point of that is, once I did that, I literally like just for an example, yeah. I couldn't progress in college. And there's other factors and things like that that went on, but just training to training, that was the number one thing I changed. I changed, and I went from I couldn't break sixteen in the five k to ten months later I broke fifteen. Yeah, which is at that place was pretty significantly. Two thousand six. Like that was when I started college. So that was that was like oh nine. Oh sorry. Ish yeah. to like basically twenty. <laughs> I'd say basically twenty ten to eleven. What year did you break fifteen? Eleven. 11 February 11 in 2011 okay. and my PR had been like from like three years before that but like anyway so it's like I, that that's just an example for me um people that we've coached or you've been on the team with yeah. people that implemented those things on the uh, like at some point and regularly like you could literally see the progression we don't have to give all the all of these examples but you could see them physically change mentally their confidence changed. Um, like one of the, I, I'll give one example. My second year, um, a guy named Luke did not have, like he would have been a similar example to me. And I added plyometrics, I had strength training, and I told him to go faster, just simply. More strides, just like, just more like a little bit more like 
go do hill sprints. And then, and at the time, I was in pretty good shape, and I was faster than he was naturally. And then by the time we got to cross of that year, so this is like three months, four months, not even, and I couldn't, I couldn't keep up with him in fifteen seconds. And it's not saying that that's like yeah. an amazing example, but it's like I, it, it, me, I could literally feel like notice I could not do anything about it. Yeah. I could sprint it all out and I couldn't keep up with them. And anyway, so there's an example. What about you? Yeah, similar to you, I've talked about this on another podcast. Um, long, extensive background with other sports, outdoor activities, sprinting, blah, 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 when I was a kid. So moving on, in high school, I remember my brother, I want to say he read something by Magnus or some random article on the internet about 10 second hill sprints or so. And obviously that would be a little lead in and then a full gas sprint for the middle portion of that with a little deceleration. So he got on that train in high school. And when I started training, literally when I started as a more full time as a junior in high school, he was already pretty well versed, or at least with some basic knowledge. Yeah, yeah. And uh, shared that with me. And so I was almost sprinting from the time I started training. And I had some, I would say in some ways, uh, ahead of the game, high school yeah. coaches uh, they would have me sprint some similar once every seven, 10 days and pick the days, um, maybe before a, a endurance based workout or something the day after. Mm-hmm. So I was sprinting a little bit in high school and college. Um, yeah. not a whole lot. I started mixing some in towards the, eh, probably pretty early in college, actually maybe my second year or so started mixing in some more sprinting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've pretty much been on it for the majority of my career for the last 10 years. So, yeah, I think it's, and just reference 40, um, I just ran a 404 four mile, four, whatever, 404 um, full mile. And I couldn't run sub 428 in high school. That's my yeah. job was 428 in high school. That's so a, I think that that long, very significant change. Yeah. yeah. Like that's, that's not just like, oh, uh, he just kept, that's high school versus that's, that's a significant enough change where I'd say a lot of people would end at like 413. Yeah. Or, you know, stuff like that it, with that same example. So I haven't known much of my career without it. And I've always had good speed for the level I was at. Now, in the past year or two, I've had to, like, rethink that because I'm, like, I'm actually pretty slow now for, like, a low four-minute mile or low 14 5K. But I still yeah, always had good closing yeah. speed and had enough. You know, like, in college, it was like, oh, like, you can close races in 61 or yeah. 58 sometimes. And that's pretty good for a upper 14s, low 15s type 5K runner or a yeah. upper 350, well, lower 350s, but for a long time, upper 350s to low four minute 1500 runner. So that was very good right. speed for that level. Right. Um, and it's not just that. I think the way I moved was probably decent, at least because of all that training. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah and your form the, changed too. Yeah. Over the last like couple of years, especially like you were pretty choppy. Yeah. And so like the more and more you worked when you added strength and just started being really diligent with how much hill sprints you were doing and like, yeah, it was noticeable. You added more of these things and then all of a sudden your knee lift, knee drive got yeah. better. Not just like when you sprinted at the end of the race, but like the whole race, your arms went from here to like, yeah, you started getting elbows back and that produces yeah. power. Like just like, yeah, yeah, it's not just like here, <laughs> you know, you're, you're getting <laughs> up and then it's like, well, then you went from, you know, 14, whatever to 1402. Yeah. 14, you know? 46 in college to 1402. Yeah. Um, so, well, that's, that's my history with it. So I haven't known much without sprint training. All right. Well, I think that's a, uh, that's a good place to, to end. I think we've touched on, um, everything from the definition of sprinting, how to implement it, like even common mistakes uh, simply put, most people just don't do enough of it. And, yeah. or, the, or, and the benefits yeah. will like of just adding it without even having it be a huge, a huge piece of somebody's training, just simply adding it from zero to like, now I'm doing it over the course of a few months, people will see big, big changes. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I think, I think we've touched on enough good stuff and uh, start sprinting. <laughs> Start sprinting? Yes. And don't like, like comment, comment or, or subscribe. subscribe.